Well, good morning. And I hope everybody slept well. I know I did. I had a great sleep last night. And today, today is July the 19th. A day that so many people have been looking forward to and will be waking up today very excited. But for the other 50% of the population, today is a day that they'll be extremely worried and concerned about. And where do I sit? Where do I sit in all of this? I just sit on the side of a fell in my tent, drinking tea and about to watch an incredible sunrise. And also, not only today is Freedom Day for many, for me, today is shower day. <laughs> and so today doesn't get any better than this. You live and you learn And I hope I've seen enough To make something right And make up for what I I don't know how well this camera is picking it up, but there's little pockets of mist forming all around me. Sorry for spinning you round so quick, but just beyond my tent over there, and as you expect, as you would expect, over the tarns and the lakes as well. But what I'm really hoping for is for that sun to come out of that cloud fairly soon and then hopefully i might get i might get some nice light down in the low areas down here and if that happens that's when i'll get the camera out but until then i'm quite happy i'm quite happy just being up here in my t-shirt it's about five o'clock in the morning and i'm up here not a not a drop of wind just looking at all of the all of the sheep and beyond the wall the king beyond the wall. Beyond the wall, there's a load of cows that have just turned up. So <laughs> we'll see. I might be up here for quite a long time. I'll be fine. So what I'm going to do while I'm waiting, I'm going to have a tidy up in the tent. Might even make myself another cheeky cup of tea. And uh, I plan to get out of Dodge in about an hour and a half, something like that. And that's me all done. Leave no trace. You wouldn't know that I was here, other than some flattened grass, which will bounce back by the end of the day. Right, okay, time to move on. And this for me is definitely virgin territory. I've never walked this walk before, I've never even been close to walking there but I think it's gonna be a relatively easy walk today. Uh, well, it will be certainly in um, miles because uh, it's only about, I think, seven and a half, eight miles today. And because I've used up all of my water other than, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, sausage. Oh, there was a couple of sheep. Oh, and a person. Oh yeah, you okay? Yeah, not bad yourself. Yeah, very good. Are you here for John? Sorry? Are you here for John? No. All oh, right, okay. Now, what's that? An event today? Uh, John Kelly is trying to break the Wainwrights record. He's literally just here. Oh really? Yeah. He's been going for what, three days now? Three, he's been going for three days. So what, what's he on now? Uh, so, hold on John. All right mate, so we're heading off down here now. Right, sorry I didn't catch your name, John Kelly. John yeah. Kelly. And you're trying to break the Wainwrights record. Yep, yeah. that's it. Good luck, good luck. All right John. Wow, that was pretty cool. He looks beat. 
It really does. So what was that? John Kelly, and he's trying to break the Wainwright's record, and he was going for, he's been going for three days. Oh man. So he obviously didn't want to hang around and have a chat with me. Don't blame him. Oh, and that was me bitching the other day about <laughs> walking 48 miles in that heat. Kind of puts it all into perspective, really, doesn't it? Anyway, what was I, what was I saying before uh, that little bit of excitement happened? Oh, hang on, hang on, I've gone a bit dark. Let me sort this out. So yeah, crikey, what was I, what was I saying about this walk? It was, uh, oh no, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say, uh, my pack this morning, um, because I've got hardly any water uh, on me now, I've got half a litre hanging off of my chest. And I think, oh, I don't know, I've probably got about 300 mil uh, in the other Nalgene bottle. My pack just feels so light, incredibly light. And I can see now why these ultra light backpackers, um, they stress over the, the, the slightest amount of weight, even cutting off handles on their toothbrushes to, to save a little bit of weight. Now, I'm not saying I'm gonna go that, that um, drastic, but I'll be honest with you, when you've got a lighter pack, man, it just makes the whole experience so much more comfortable uh, and so much more enjoyable. The only thing is though, there's always going to be a trade-off, isn't there? Um, and the trade-off for me is obviously my photography gear. Um, oh, hang on, let me quickly. I don't know if you can see them. Oh, I don't know if this camera's picking that up at all. But look, they're just, they're running off down there. And obviously the two guys that are, are with him I don't know, perhaps they're just obviously giving him some encouragement and perhaps there's a few of them all taking it in turns. That was so cool to see him. Um, yeah, so my, my trade-off is obviously my camera gear. Um, and it's been really quite eye-opening taking photos on this camera, the uh, Sony 6400 because I'm so used to having it as a, a vlogging camera and not a uh, stills camera. And uh, I did do a little bit of Googling, as you do, when you've got a bit of time on your hand. And um, Sony, they do do an 18 to 200 to fit this camera. So I don't know, I might even purchase that. And that way then, that will give me um, a huge amount of versatility without the weight but as I've said on um, on parts of this video you know the more you do the more you learn the more experience you get what works what doesn't work so there's never there's never a massive failure it's uh, it's all a, a learning curve well I know that I had a, a great view of the Langdale Pikes from where I was camping up on Black Crag but these peaks, um, I've wanted to do these um, for years and years, and there's a really special reason um, that, I, that I want to do them. Uh, I'm not too sure now is the right time to, to share why I want to do them. Perhaps I'll, um, I'll share it on the next video when I'm actually up there. But um, yeah, this place is gonna hold it's bizarre because this place is going to hold an incredible special place in my heart, yet I've never been up there. But it'll all make sense, um, possibly, on the next video. But like when I was walking from Olverston to Coniston, and I had the old man in front of me, something to walk to <coughs> on this walk today. I'm obviously walking to... Uh, Harrison Stickle, and uh, that is super cool, just watching it get bigger and bigger in front of my eyes. Oh, I hope this walk lives up to everything that I've got pictured in my mind today, 
no great kind of elevation, beautiful scenery and uh, glorious weather. Oh, look at that, look at it. Let me just turn it around. Not that, <laughs> not that it's changed much in the, in the last um, 100 meters, but beautiful, beautiful. I've got to stop saying beautiful. Think of another word. If I was Stephen Fry, he would have loads of words in his arsenal. Okay, between now and when I come back, I will have built up a whole new dictionary for myself, rather than using the word beautiful. Okay, well, it kind of had to happen sooner or later, I suppose. Um, I have to walk past, oh, there's a baby, but it's not a baby baby. Baby, baby. <laughs> hell, there's a bowl. Sorry, I didn't mean to swear. Right, let me hurry up and get out of here. Oh, I need to shut the... Sorry, just trying to shut the gate. Mate. Look at the nuts on that thing. It's like a box of speedball. Oh, okay, just walking away. Is that coming behind me? Oh. Mate, cows are one thing. A ball, that's something completely different, especially when that little baby was there. All right, we're all good. We're all good in the hood. Kind of. Well, I've just come to a, a fork in the path and I can either go down this path or I can head down this path. And the signs are saying I can go either direction. Um, but just like looking at the map, I think if I take this path down here that's going to bring me to uh, a waterfall and then from there i can rejoin uh, the cumbria way or it might even be a part of the cumbria way just alternative routes that path down there looks to be uh, quicker but i think that could be a lot more scenic and i've got plenty of time great weather almost a beautiful great weather so uh let's let's go down there and explore the waterfall well, so far, I'm pleased I, I came through here. This is, a, this is a really nice walk. Mind you, I'm, doing, I'm going downhill quite a lot. You know what happens there. You pay for that in the end. But I can just see uh, the, small, uh, the small stream. I can't turn the camera around at the moment, so I don't think you'll see it. Oh, you may be able to. May be able to. There we go, just through there. That is a lovely sound. It's very much like white noise. I love the, the sound of a, a stream or the ocean, rain on a tent. I've actually got um, like an app on my phone, sleep well or something like that. And sometimes I just kind of put that on in the background and uh, drift, uh, drift off to sleep on that, with that. So hopefully, not too far, I may come to this waterfall. I don't think it's gonna be fast flowing because even some of the small little streams that are normally streams are just kind of runoffs really. You know, they've all dried up. Um, and there's a lot of pathways that I'm walking on at the moment and they've got the stones that, that cut across um, to try and take the water away from the path. Uh, but, you know, obviously we don't need them at the moment. They're all completely dried. So, yeah, this waterfall may be a, a trickle fall. Still a nice walk though. No, no, no. This is more than a trickle fall. This is 
glorious. And look, there is a huge drop off this side. Oh, I've got to be careful. Look at that, that is, that is steep, that is. Right, let's have a look down this path. Oh, that's really surprised me. Might, oh, it might not be a path here, right? This might just be a bit of a, a dead end, almost. Oh, I don't want this to break off. And the water, the little pools of water, they are so clear. And there was a, a pathway coming down here and then there was a, another pathway that takes you round here. So I opted to come obviously down here thinking it might take me all the way down to the, the stream, but obviously it doesn't. So I'll make my way back up and then hopefully I'll be able to come down to the water's edge where uh, perhaps I can stop for a little while. And you just, oh, 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 and just enjoy the view. Oh, it's gorgeous. This will do me for a cup of tea, that's for sure. Look at this, look. I'm not too sure what that would have been used for, that little building. I don't know if it's a pump house, not too sure, but... Nice little building there. And then there's the little falls. I was contemplating going right the way down there, but quite frankly, I don't fancy the, the climb down and then the climb back up. So I'm happy sitting here, just admiring the view. Everywhere you walk, there just seems to be another little hidden treasure. Because it's quite hot as well today, um, this is some nice respite from the sun just sitting here in the shade. Look at that. That is a cute little gate. Look. That's about... That's about two foot. It's not even that, about 20 inches. Oh, I like things like that. Someone had the, the pleasure to build that. Well done. See, it's things like this and like that little gate. <laughs> I just, I really appreciate, I suppose, being a carpenter, you know, always building bits and pieces. And uh, just, you know, people have done that. For us, I know that it's like obviously to, to kind of protect the environment, but it's also to, you know, make the pathway safer. And uh, I just think, oh, you know, that time and effort that went into to building this, that sometimes we just walk up and just kind of take for granted. But when you think someone's had to come here on their hands and knees and, uh, and actually install all of this. Fair play to you lads or lasses. Could have been a girl. Who knows? Whoever it was. Thank you. It's making my life a lot easier. And I keep switching between my phone and the camera. So obviously if the colours are very different that's the reason why. But I'm getting very low on battery life now well on my phone and on the camera so i've just got to nurse it nurse it to the end here we go here we go reverse reverse oh this is a tight one my master class ain't working <laughs> It worked. worked like a... Oh, that was a reverse in, uh, reverse out. There was no twist and swivel. That was purely a breathe in, you fat sod, and squeeze yourself out. 
Right, another gate, another gate. The Cumbria what? Oh, now that, down, that down the bottom there, that does look tight. Oh, I may have to go on a diet for the next 30 yards to get through there. Hmm. I'm sure we'll make it. I'm sure we will. I might just have to hoist my bum cheeks over the top of the wall. Yeah, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Sorry, this is really bumpy. <laughs> Look at that, look at that. There we go. Oh, oh, I've got to be careful in my tent. I don't, all right. This is a bit of a shuffle, a bit of a shuffle and a lean. Oh, and then swivel and then down. I'm like a ballerina, wow. Look at this bridge. That is really cool. And when you're walking on it, man, it kind of feels a bit trippy. That is beautiful, that. What a lovely little feature. The Trevor Woodburn Bridge. Opened July 2007. May have to admit defeat with this one. Oh, man, that one's tight. Seriously tight. Uh, not, there is not a lot of room there. Let's open it up to give myself. Oh, God, I can't even get that in. No. Oh, no chance, no way, friggin' Jose. Oh, hang on, hang on, have I found a new? Oh. Oh. By Jove, he is the gate whisperer. I should write a book. I spoke too soon. Right, well, if you can do that one, you can do this one. Oh, there's a bit more. I must have lost weight in between those two. <clears throat> well, I've just made my way through Elter Water, and I was hoping I would just be able to find a little cafe or a pub opened early, you know, for a bit of breakfast, but the pub's not open until 12 o'clock, at the time there's about half past 10. And I found a little cafe, and this is not the first time I've heard this, but they're closed because they're short-staffed. I think at the moment, everywhere's struggling in the hospitality um, arena to, to actually get staff. There's um, the old Dungeon Gill, when me and Helen was there, um, they could have done a, a roaring trade, he was telling us, in the mornings, but I just can't get the staff to open, which is uh, such a shame, because obviously at the moment, the lakes is just heaving with people. That's why I didn't film a great deal in Elterwater, because just the, the volume of, of people. So there's nothing for it. I've had to find myself a little bit of shade which I think I'm gonna to have to keep moving around because it's a very thin tree, the canopy. So I just found myself a little bit of shade and I'm gonna cook myself a chicken curry. Sounds very Gordon Ramsay or Jamie Oliver, but it's just a packet mill.
and I've got the good old summit to eat. But now I'm going to go for the, the chicken curry from Adventure Foods. They're all £5.50 each and they're all 600 calories and they all take eight minutes. <laughs> all right, let me try and find this little oxygen thing. Oh, look at that, right to the top. Right, here we go. Fill to, oh, what line do I fill to here? Up to line nine. Stir well, close zipper, allow, allow to stand for eight minutes. Right, okay. Oh, must admit, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to um, getting to Little Langdale now. I know it's not been a, a, a long walk. Um, I just want a beer. <laughs> I'm craving, I, I think what it is, I'm craving cold drinks. Because even the, the water that you kind of get at the, the streams at the moment, nothing's particularly cold and I think yeah so I'm just thinking right get to little Langdale get to the pub and sort of a pint of, of cold beer it could even be Diet Coke I really don't mind as long as it's cold I have to have all of my cup my drinks ice cold and I have to have all of my hot drinks piping hot I can't have anything in between right not much I can do other than wait, relax, have dinner, and then move on. Well, I thought this was a good place to stop and just show off the Langdale Pikes. And I must admit, now I'm standing here, they do look quite imposing. Just think I'll be on the top of Harrison Stickle tomorrow. And when I look at it from this angle, I think, whoa, <laughs> that is going to be one hard slog straight out the gate tomorrow. There is no easing yourself in gently. There's no limbering up the, the muscles. That is going to be from the road straight away to the top. But I'm sure I'll be OK. I've done higher. Well, I've done higher in England and I've done higher in uh, the Lake District, uh, in Snowdonia. So I think I'll be okay. I might start quite early tomorrow. So try and break the majority of the hike um, without this sun. Well, I think down there, in and amongst them houses down there, that's the new Dungeon Gill Hotel. And that is the Langdale Pikes. That looks pretty imposing. That's why I'm having a night in the hotel tonight. I'm gonna have a good shower, a good few beers, so I'm all fresh in the morning to tackle that lump. And just, doo -doo -doo -doo, just there. See that over there? Oh, I can't even see my hand. But there, I think. That is Side Pike. And uh, I went up there a few videos ago where I had kind of like awful weather. But I must admit, just there, there is a really good camp spot. And I wish I'd have actually stayed there for the night. Never mind. I made it to Brown Howe anyway. Right, well, it's all downhill, I think, now until I get to the, the hotel. So hopefully the next time you see me, it will be with beer in hand. <sighs> that is wonderful. <laughs> it really is. Well, I've been at the hotel now for probably about an hour, I'm guessing. Do you know what? I actually felt like I was quite rude to the um, young girl, bless her heart, on reception. I mean, I wasn't, but when I walked in, I didn't realise how overheated I actually was. And I put the mask on 
um, and I'm standing in with my, with my pack on and and as soon as I put the mask on, I just felt that I almost couldn't breathe. And she was doing her job, bless me. She was saying, oh, you know, we've got dinner, we've got this. And all I wanted to do was get to the room. And I just said, yeah, that, that's fine, that's fine. I just felt that I couldn't breathe. And I went up to the room and I had all these kind of plans in my head. I thought, oh, when I get to the room, I'll put everything on charge and I'll do this and I'll do that. I literally just dumped everything on the floor and just got straight into the shower. And uh, I, I got out of the shower just thinking, oh, this room is unbearable. I, I can't sleep in this room. It was like an oven in there. Um, and, and then I, I, I kind of thought, right, let's kind of plug some stuff in, get some things charged and got all my chargers going, recharging all the batteries. And and then I've done some, some laundry, washed everything, you know, apart from the trousers that I've got on at the moment. This is a fresh T-shirt, but... I started doing some some laundry and then to rinse it all the, all off I washed everything in the basin and then I took it all back in the shower so I had another shower just washing all the, the soap suds kind of out of the laundry and then after that after being in the room for about I don't know half an hour I realized the, the room wasn't hot it wasn't hot at all it was me I, I think I just overheated without realizing and then once my body temperature went back down Oh, it just feels amazing. <laughs> just feels so lovely to be clean and just not feeling sticky anymore. And I just went to the bar, um, obviously to get uh, to get these beers. And there was a there's a there's a big queue in there. There's only one person serving, and everybody is ordering at least kind of like two or three drinks because out the front of the hotel is just absolutely heaving at the moment. But there's no one in this back garden here under the shade it's really nice and um, uh, there was a guy standing in front of me and the sweat that was dripping down his neck it, it was like you know he just got out of a shower himself but I'm sure that's what I look like when I just got to the hotel so I think what I'm gonna do I'm going to um, I'm gonna have a, a bit of an early night tonight I think I'm gonna I'm gonna have an early dinner and I'm going to have um, an early night and then what I can do tomorrow, I want to be up and out pretty much at first light so I can make the majority of that walk when it's cool because that's what's killing me at the moment. It's just this midday heat. It's just energy zapping. So I think if I can break the back of it tomorrow when the, the sun is still very low, I think that will do me kind of all sorts of favours it really will and I think other part of this video I said oh, I'll, the reason I chose this kind of hotel and, and, and you know why I plan to stop here now I'll explain when I got here and, and so basically when I planned to do this route I was watching lots of videos and it was that guy that just had a, an awful time he, it just rained it was like torrential rain um, and, so, and I booked this well, I plan, sorry, I plan to do this hike. I think it was back in kind of like March time. And the weather was just shocking in March. And that's when I thought, right, well, if I just book this hotel, because in my mind, I was convinced I was going to get rained on. So I thought, well, I'll have two days out in the rain. I can come into the hotel. I can dry all my clothes off. I can hang the tent up in the shower to dry all of that off. And, uh, you know, recharge the batteries. And so that's why I booked it. And, and look at the weather. The weather's just like the complete opposite to, uh, to, to what that poor guy had. But I'm so pleased I'm here because my, my battery was, everything was running on empty. The power bank, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the camera batteries, my phone. So I've come here now, everything's on charge. I feel clean, I feel refreshed, I have beer. <laughs> I am so happy. So all of them aches and pains that I kind of had earlier and all that feeling of exhaustion that I had earlier has all disappeared now. So I think it's great to have a night in the hotel and then tomorrow morning I'll be up bright and early and we will hit Harrison Stickle. Anyway, until then, have a good afternoon. I know I'm going to. I would just to let you know 
you're you're propped up on my second pint of lager. I wasn't going to queue up again. Cheers.